Okay, it is 701. It's time to call this meeting to order. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, that's what I was Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Ms. Jones, if you'd like to lead us in the opening prayer tonight. Welcome to the club. Okay. Heavenly Father, please guide us this evening as we make plans for our city. Let us make good choices and support one another. And also keep our town safe during the pandemic and support our first responders as this continues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good job. Call the rolls. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Sherman? Here. Mr. Dunphy? Here. Ms. Grant? Here. Mr. Booth? Present. Ms. Jones? Here. Okay. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the July 13, 2020 Council meeting and the July 4th, uh, 14th, 2020 Special Meeting? Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Smith, or Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. yes. Mr. Smith? I would like to make a motion to add ordinance 61-20 to the agenda tonight. Second. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. President, we have uh, with us tonight two new officers that uh, we'd like to get introduced. So if we could get them up here, we get them yes. on the way. Hello, everybody. These are our two newest full time officers that just got sworn in last, uh, last week on the 20th. Uh, you guys want to come out here, please? Come out for Facebook, man. The gentleman here in the red shirt is KJ Tracy, and the guy in uniform is Ben Adams. They both worked last week. This started their second week. They both are going. I'm excited about them starting. Uh, they're both in their field training operations program right now. It's an eight week program that we're going to have implemented to uh, put all through new hires through. So that way we have a basic understanding and level of training up to a point where before they get cut loose on their own and uh, are patrolling the streets. So right now they've been assigned to a senior officer and they're going through their field training program. Sounds good. That's hey, one more, more guys. Oh, good good so good which one's which? This is Ben Adams here in uniform. Ben? This is KJ Tracy. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming aboard. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Jim, Thanks, welcome guys. to the city of Nelsonville. Okay. Thanks, guys. Do we have any citizens' comments? That's where we're at. Citizen, do we have any citizens' comments, Scott? Yeah, I didn't get any. Didn't see any. I didn't see any. Nothing? Nothing yet on Facebook. Okay. All right. Business and organizational comments. Okay. Committee discussions. I will be um, getting those new lists out uh, tonight. In fact, I'll sit down and get those done. Sorry, kind of my mind kind of forgot about that. Um, and then we can start getting our committee discussions and committee meetings scheduled. So I think that uh, I think that if we can do uh, a dedicated meeting every month on a certain day, I think that would be a great time that we can keep this so people start knowing. When the meetings are okay. Um, committee meeting discussions. What's that? Past committee meeting discussions. Yeah. Any discussions with past committee meetings? Yeah. Well, so we had a police and fire meeting, and uh, in there we discussed equipment for the, the police department, 
fire department or, or the yeah the fire department also want up their part time roster. No additional cost. Just add people to the roster, uh, and then the police department was just new procedures and uh, yeah. updating equipment. Yeah, we have an ordinance tonight for um, some items I think we're getting rid of. I believe so. Yes, so. Carla. Yeah, finance. Well, finance we had a finance committee meeting on the twenty third. Um, if anyone wants to get on, Scott, where was that streamed on? The finance meeting, City of Nelsonville. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to watch, we had a utility committee meeting, and one of the things that are that will be a, a interest to the public, and they want might want to comment to us is we are considering doing curbside recycling only, and not having the dumpsters because the dumpsters have become a tremendous problem with people dumping trash or whatever. And that is a big change. So if you have a comment about it and, and you want to let your councilman know your feelings on it, uh, make sure we're, we will be having another uh, utility committee meeting, but make sure that we know what your feelings are. But uh, it, we're thinking that it might not be really expensive for people that want to recycle to just have a roll off to be able to recycle if, if we go that direction and we're fighting with people dumping trash and stuff blowing out of the dumpsters and the company not wanting to empty the dumpsters and we're just considering doing away with them. So that's the most important thing that come out of that meeting. We, we talked with city employees about projects that we're doing and of what future costs may, may be. And again, that's streamed, that meeting is streamed too, so you can watch it if you want. But the biggest takeaway is we are considering doing away with the recycling dumpsters. So. And, and that was effective the next contract, correct? Wasn't next that? contract. Yeah. We'll be putting a contract out for bid this fall, and it'll go in effect on March 1st, I think, March 1st, either March 1st or April 1st. Scott, you'll have to check that one off for me. But we'll, we'll be getting a contract. Uh, the other thing we did, we asked everybody to review the contract and suggest changes, and Scott got the contract out to everybody. So we'll be doing that. We'll be calling another meeting, and, but like I said, if you have, if you want your feelings to be known on it, then contact somebody on the committee or one of the other council members. So you know, we're we're kind of in the COVID nineteen thing where communication is hard, but we want we do want to hear what from you on it. So. I guess that's the gist of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Smith. All right, we are to the auditor slash treasurer's report. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, here's the treasurer's. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, now we can. The treasurer's report, this is for June 2020. Mr. Mullane worked this up. Uh, he did want me to note that on some of the dates, they say as of May 31st on these pages, uh, but it is for June, it's just a typo. So the first uh, page is uh, just the total funds of our sweep account, money market, and our CD, uh, $2.4 million just about. On the next one page is our record of investments. So this shows interest bearing accounts, uh, savings account, um, uh, which is essentially the money market and then CD and uh, interest earned to date over on the right side of 22,725 until the Fed lowered the rates. They're almost rock bottom now. Um, the next page is just everything in, everything out, uh, checks that cleared the account, checks that haven't cleared. And outstanding checks at the bottom of 107,000 as of June 30th, 2020. And I wonder if he's got his number on here. I forget what number he said. He's been doing a really great job. Here it is, $36.52 on the last one. Mm -hmm. So when Mr. Mullane reconciled everything for the entire month, he came within $36.52 of my books, um, which considering the first few months I was here, which it was seven digits off, uh, or I'm sorry, six, I'm still thinking too big, five. Um, 36 bucks is awesome. 
So we ideally would like to get that even closer, uh, but we're getting there. And uh, I think he's been doing a great job. I complimented him last time. He was within $80 last meeting, he's within 40 bucks this time. So uh, we were doing a good job in keeping an eye on all of us. So that's the treasurer's report. Uh, Taylor, I got a question real quick. The yes, uh, uh, maturity date on the uh, CD shows uh, June. Uh -huh. so. The uh, CD, that CD did expire, uh, and the investment committee selected a new CD with People's Bank. Okay. I'm not part of that committee. Um, I believe you guys rolled it into one, didn't you? You took the two, yeah. rolled it into one. Unfortunately, rates dropped from 2.35% to, I think, 0.52. Yeah, they're really bad. I think we just did wow. it for six months. Yeah. I get more on my online savings account than people's offered. No offense to people's, but theirs was like five times everybody else's. So, um, yeah, it's projected to go down again in August. So. Mm -hmm. The investment committee is the city attorney, the city manager, and the treasurer. Okay. Eventually, we'll get to a point, and our auditor's report will change a little bit. The state auditors want us to uh, basically reconcile on my end, so I'll do the same exact homework that Mr. Mullane does, and we both try to compare each other's reports to each other and get even closer to the penny. Um, that's a process that apparently hasn't happened in like six years in Nelsonville, but we'll get there. We're working with state auditors on that now. So the auditor's report for June. Uh, for today, July 27th, this is the green page. I had a few formatting issues today, so forgive some of the extended text and scrunch text. The first page is just our statement of cash position. Uh, this is blown up, so you guys might be able to see it better. Um, for our new folks, the most important funds are the 100 fund, the general fund. Most of City Hall is funded out of there. Uh, and then I would argue the 700, the water fund, and the 750, the sewer funds. So when, I, when I look at this page every morning, uh, I look for those fund differences every day. Uh, you'll see a beginning balance, the general fund 84,000. It's at 162,000 as of June 30th, which is good. We thought it'd be close to zero or under zero right now. And a pandemic and an economic breakdown happened since then, and we're up. So I consider that a great fortune. You'll notice uh, two of the funds hurting the worst. Uh, Parks and Rec Fund went from negative to more negative. I uh, don't love that. And the Finance Committee will probably discuss solutions to that more. Capital Improvement Fund's about half. And Sewer Fund, we would have liked to have seen the, at this six points in, above its year start amount. And it's still under, so uh, still a little bit lower there. We have spent 3.99 million dollars this year, including the sewer plant project, and it brought in 3.804. So the next page just kind of reiterates that. This is a page I'm going to keep for you guys. For the new guys, you uh, will get annoyed by this like the other council members soon. Just kidding. Um, this is all of our main fund balances and what is considered a healthy balance. A conservative healthy balance in the state is three months worth of expenses. I'm sorry, not a conservative, a, a general healthy balance, a more conservative, cautious approach is six months, which is what I have here, six months worth of expenses. And you'll see that most of our funds are below, but some are close. Uh, the next page I just put year on year, or uh, comparing to last year, are our funds increasing or decreasing? Uh, water fund has an increase. You'll see in the center there from June 30th, 19 to June 30th, 20. You'll see an increase there of uh, just over $200,000, which is good. Um, sewer fund, small increase. Street funds, a decrease. And the general fund held steady, uh, which is our first good news for the general fund in three years. On the next page, I just have some explainers about why it's important that I talk about increasing or decreasing funds um, because I use the water fund as an example. The water fund was very healthy, had a ton of money in it, uh, plummeted to nearly zero, and has climbed back towards a healthy status, which I hope will be there within 18 months. Uh, this process has taken five years from being healthy to near zero to coming back to life. 
Um, so I give that just as an example of how far in advance it takes council action uh, and, and administrative action to see desired results. Um, and the general fund, if it's held hold steady till year end, will be the first change in direction for it since 2017, which would be good. It's been declining since 2017, uh, where it held steady and before then had declined for many years. Uh, so the next page is kind of more important for council. Important notes about June's revenues. Uh, I've talked about this for five months in a row now. We have a water fund. Normally we would see water and sewer collections around 50% of expected collections. Water fund just under the sewer fund at 39% uh, leaves us at a could be a, a pretty drastic um, shortfall at the end of the year. Um, for council, we kind of discussed this with the city manager today. For council's understanding, water and sewer rates are calculated based off one reading at the meter. So how are they coming up so differently? Uh, I don't know if this is a state rule or if this is our software's rule or, or what, but the practice at the city for forever is what I'm told uh, has been that if somebody owes a $500 water bill, only pays $250 of it, it only applies to the water fund until the full bill is paid up. The water fund has precedent of the sewer fund. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. It's been that way for like, since we've had this software for like I've 15 years. I've been around years. since 96 and I don't ever remember an ordinance to that effect, but that doesn't mean that there wasn't one pre prior to that. Yeah. I don't know if it, it's just how the system's built. Um, so that, that could be one reason why the sewer fund's hurting. In general, water collections is down. Uh, so it's not the only reason. It just may explain the disparity. Yeah, I would normally think it would be 50-50 split. Well, that's why I brought it up. I talked to the city manager about it today. I, I don't, I couldn't understand the disparity, so I just looked at the the inner workings of the uh, billing software, and that's what it's doing. Council wants it that way. We can just do it simple ordinance. Provide us a fifty-fifty split. Um, yeah, so anyway, income tax collections as far as June thirtieth, seven hundred forty-five thousand uh, dollars. Last year, at this point, eight hundred thirteen. This was the first notable shortfall of 2020, although to today, July 27th, we're about 25,000 under, so roughly half of that, um, which is better. <laughs> um, I put here in my observation, I consider it very fortunate that we've nearly matched 2019 income tax collections with so many businesses shut, employees laid off, hours cut, gas tax collections far below initial projections. And then my last few items just are, uh, Cindy Miller was hired as our account clerk part-time. Uh, she's jumped right into auditing the water and sewer books. It was one of the reasons we made the discovery today. Developing new processes that will bring in water and sewer debt over the city, which just for two years adds up to $140,000. Substantial, just to January 1st, 2018. And wanted to let council know that all of the penalties, fines, assessments, all the fun stuff the state levied against us uh, due to the alleged theft and fraud. I'm working with the State Department of Taxation to get much of that money back. They offered, once we got in compliance with the state, they offered to give that I could request <laughs> part of it back. And if any of you know me, I took that as free range to all of it back <laughs> because I don't think fines and penalties serve a good public purpose for the city taxpayer. Um, so we're working on that number. And we paid the state about $20,000 in past due assessments, and I'm hoping to get 15 to 20 of that. So um, they made one denial today, but we have 60 days to appeal, and I plan on just for 500 bucks. They denied that one, so I'm going to fight that $500. <laughs> and then for everybody at home who can't see this, uh, this report's online at cityofnelsonville.com, as well as all of the documentation that backs it up. Hey, I had a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just curious as to why a healthy level for the capital improvement fund is so low. Seems like it should be higher. So, it 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 I guess it's arbitrary in a way. The the way I defined it with capital improvement was I took out this year we have in last year, three to four major projects in the capital improvement. Those aren't typical. We don't typically spend two, three hundred thousand dollars for like 
Church Street out of capital improvement. That's more of a new practice. Um, so what I took was six months worth of expenses for our routine expenses like car payments, um, equipment upgrades to City Hall for the fire department, police department, uh, that type of thing. So the routine expenses for capital improvement rest around 260000 It's only when you add in those projects like Church Street, Wood Lane, Riverside that you get over a million dollars. We just seem to always have emergencies. That's why I wanted to <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, the well, other thing about that is that we changed the income split, tax split to get by this year to 95.5. It was at 85.15. So 95% of the income tax collections are going to uh, the general fund to survive in the general fund, and only 5% of the income tax collections are going to the um, uh, capital improvement fund. So. That, that was a big change too, but there was no way around it. With no other way to, for the general fund to survive, and we had to do it. We're hoping that as things get better, as you know, the economy picks back up and things get better, we can uh, change that back to put some more money into the capital improvement fund. But that's how we that's how we was able to survive to survive this year in the, in the general fund. So I had a question for you. What yes, sir. What are we doing uh, for water collections? I, I realize we're down. So what, what steps are we taking to collect that? Yes, yeah, so uh, Cindy's first job, she's been working at the last two weeks. Um, she actually just finished uh, first major phase of the development is to come up with a whole new collections process. I'm sure the city, the city's been around forever, right? So the city probably has on the books somewhere a process it's never been followed or something. So we didn't go looking for it. We said we're going to make one to what works for us now. Um, just, you know, just sort of presented the idea to the city manager today that I want to sit down with him by the end of week and present what she's come up with um, after me and her have finalized it. Uh, but it's going to be extensive. I mean, so current problems, the main, I don't want to say the main, one of the main problems is if somebody moves, they get a final bill. Their final bill could be $100, and we issue that final bill. They've already moved. We bill them 30 to you know 30 to 40 days after uh, the final bill is kind of calculated. We because we do a month behind. They probably already moved. The bill doesn't make it to them, and that's the final attempt. So this person's now moved to Logan. That bill just sits there on the books. One of the other main problems right now is we can't shut people's water off. There seems to be some argument that some, I think AEP is beginning within the next few weeks. There seems to be some debate whether they can or not. I don't I know. I thought they were, they removed that prohibition on shutting water. Uh, that's what I heard. When I talked to two local water providers, they said they hadn't heard anything. I'll uh, check on it for you. I thought the, uh, they yeah, might expire. There's one time. thing we need to make plain to the public. There will come a day when you have to pay your water bill. So right now, because we can't shut you off, you shouldn't be sitting thinking that that's going to go away because there will be a day when the state says, all right, you can shut off water and you're going to owe that bill. So it's, it's important to understand you got to do your best to pay your bill. You just can't say, oh, well, they can't shut me off, so I'm not going to pay the bill because it's going to catch up with you eventually. So we're, we're not a savings yeah, have, and loan. Yeah. You got to remember too that there, years and years and years ago there was a federal court action against Milkville that there's a federal order on how we shut water off. And we we did well, we have a proper procedure to do we that. We did so develop a policy that in the water policy on that that has to be followed. You're correct. Yeah. And as a result of that lawsuit, there was the water policy was adopted by council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want to adjust the shut off. So the shorter part, the shorter answer to your question is active accounts, closed accounts. Active accounts are delinquencies twice that was six months ago. Because, well, I'll just put it this way. We have folks, uh, I don't want to pick a pick on book till. They're just the largest addition to the city since COVID. But we have like 20 some accounts in book till since March 1st. They've never paid a dime. They open an account with us. They've never had to pay because we can't shut anything off. Some of them are like 700 bucks. I mean, if I doubt they're watching, but if they were, we're going to get that $700. <laughs> I mean, we just can't get it yet. So that's active accounts, closed accounts. These people would move away. 
and we just don't attempt to collect. And that's and the large amount that you're talking about since no, 2018. Yeah, yeah no offense. I know there's landlords on the council, but some of these landlords in town, they have like 30 accounts uh, that their tenants never paid. And I'm sorry, but if they moved away, I mean, the landlord tenant form says they owe. So I can think of one company in particular. Uh, the number was 26. That you can't transfer from one. It's property specific. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you shut off X property with a Y property bill. Yeah, yeah right. No, we're not going to shut anything off. I, do, well, I mean, do, can't do people notify? I mean, do they notify you before they're moving to shut the water off? Typically, it's, yes. So is there a way, though, I don't know how many people are moving in and out of town every month, like to send somebody out to do a read and give them a final bill so that you won't shut it off until they pay their bill. It'll, it'll stay in their name. I, I don't know. I mean, as far as it, it, we do do a final read, I, I believe they call it a readout set, the guys out in the field. and. Uh, we send them, we ask them where to send their final bill, but I think there is this impression that they've done it five times. In fact, we have one customer over in Bookville, this individual had three closed accounts at Nelsonville that this person owed on and was able to open a Bookville account and, and, and I kid you not, has not paid since we opened Bookville March 1st. So like there's this impression people have who apparently move around more than I do that they know they just don't have to pay the last one. And so Cindy's plan, not to get into too much more specifics, is multiple phone calls, multiple requests for payment. We have a very strict shutoff uh, process, which- I got a question Mr. for Gary. Is on the final bills that, that we're not getting, say they're like 60 or 70 or 90 days past, is it legal for us to turn them over to a collection agency or we have an ordinance to turn them you know, the really old bills over to a collection agency and try to collect them. Yeah, you can. I mean, remember, you, Mr. You, remember when you turn to a collection agency, you're going to give up 40, 50. Yeah, yeah you're going to lose a lot of money doing that. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're losing 100. We're losing, they're going to answer a collection agency anyway. They're, we're losing 100 percent now. So if we got 60 percent, yeah, no one's going to answer it now. Could we ask yeah. the estimate the final bill when they call to have it shut off based on the prior? Yeah, we can bills. estimate. Yeah, well, they can actually go out and do a final reading. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We yeah. You know, if the if the if the time when the person's moving out is not uh, too close to read time, we do try to read that day or the next day. If it's if it's like three days before we read the whole district, we pretty much just wait for them to you know they're moving out, and we'll just wait for the three days. Yeah. Most utility companies go out and do a final read when you when you disconnect. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is is even if we're asking for final address, they're not paying. Uh, we're getting it. They're just not paying. So why are we turning it on in their name somewhere else if they already owe two bills? Uh, it's a great question. <laughs> so I asked that question and I made sure there's actually two two things. That might take a change in our well, council well, change in our policy. Well then we it need could to change that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean if we were fully if we were for sure empowered to say we can't turn the water on until or we can add to your bill your old debts is probably how it would go. Uh, well, well, some people uh, place a required deposit to turn it off too. I know we actually part of the deposit, I think. And, um, well, that may, that may not be enough. That's by state law, right. though. You can't go over 50 bucks. We tried to. Uh, I don't know if it's still a state law or not. I have to look at it. Well, you can look at it, though. I mean, we had an order. So that sounds like something if we can have maybe a utility meeting before the next council meeting. And yes, because they should Gary, be able to just find out if we have the ability to shut off water and if, what we can do with. Uh, and the landlord tenant form says, you know, like the, I'll just tell you this the closed accounts is like 85% rentals. Um, so I know Athens got around this problem by just requiring it in the landlord's name, I think. Yeah, um, that's a big controversial issue. So mm -hmm. there are there are ways, there are some multiple ways to skin the cat, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's definitely a big problem. And the one company in particular, it's an apartment complex. So that property has stayed in that company. And I mean, there's just bills all over the books where their tenants just left. You just and have to get more aggressive? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And, and, and the last thing, uh, we can, so if we have a utility meeting before the next meeting, we can address that for collections. And then we're going to need some kind of ordinance out of utility department about splitting up the sewer water evenly so it doesn't what 
the software company typically uploads regulations automatically, so we don't have to worry about it. State water regulations. So do you think that water comes first thing as a state rule or anything? I I don't know without Not looking. I, it doesn't either. sound true to me that it would normally be. Normally, you would have to account. Fund accounting and stuff would require you to, you know, divide the income that comes in. Sure. Yeah. 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 One other thing I'd like for you to check out because I didn't check it out at the time, but we, me and Dan and somebody else brought an ordinance in. I can't remember who the third person was to raise the deposit to a hundred dollars. And then at the council meeting, Stephanie come in and said that you told her the state law was fifty dollars. We couldn't go over fifty. I don't ever remember saying that. I never no, I, 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 looking back, we should we should have checked that into that. But if you can check in, if we can raise the deposit, we should raise the deposit. I mean, in today's world, fifty bucks is not is not. Hmm. The committee would give us at least a week. I know Cindy and I wanted to meet with Scott. And Mr. Hunter next week to try and hammer out. Well, I'm going to email me before no. I call the meeting. That's not going to happen next week. I'm not going to be We'll email you. To you. <laughs> yeah, we do a Zoom meeting, maybe. Maybe. I don't think. No, I'll, I'll wait till Gary emails me those two questions back and then I'll call the meeting. Sounds good. The odds we can do. Motion to approve. Second. Did we do the correct? Yeah, we yeah, need a motion to approve both of them. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Right. Mayor's court report. Don't have one. Okay. Code enforcement update. Oh, nope, that was a mistake. That was, that was a mistake. mistake. <laughs> All right. Scratch. Number 12. Oh. Let's go to the police department update. All right. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're doing and have done since our last meeting, is you met two new hires. Uh, KJ and Ben has started the last week. This begins our second week. They're both doing really good. We're still waiting on some of their uniforms is in, but not completely, uh, as is mine. We're still waiting on some things that's trickling in. Um, but they're currently going through the new FTO program, like I spoke of earlier, uh, which is an eight-week program. Uh, this is their second week. Uh, they've both been, have been very busy on the shifts. I've got them running the streets and things of that nature, primarily in order to affiliate themselves with departmental policies and procedures that's in place. As well as the ones that we're looking to update. Um, I'm also doing, I've just completed a background on an individual that I would like to hire on a part time basis. His name is Chris Jones. Um, some of you might have met him the other day. Uh, Chris is a, a, a good officer, comes highly recommended, uh, very proactive, young, uh, former Marine, Mexican, worked in Meigs County Sheriff's Office and Washington County Sheriff's Office. Um, he's somebody that I just, like I said, I just completed the background. I'd like to get him started on a part-time basis as soon as possible. Um, just so we can eliminate some of the additional overtime. Once we're starting, I'm starting to be able to put it together a schedule where we're not having as much overtime right now, which I've been trying to eliminate. Um, currently, thanks to Mr. Sherman, big, big uh, thanks to him. We're currently painting the office and redoing the entire police department as far as from an aesthetic point of view. We're getting new flooring, new furniture is going to be purchased through uh, the grant that we received through the COVID grant. Um, hopefully, we're going to be able to get laptops for each of the officers as well. They're going to have their own individual workstations. It's going to be in compliance with COVID regulations, as well as I think it's going to be an increased productivity issue as far as the guys have their own area to work uh, that they're responsible for. Um, the city manager and myself has continued to work with Dr. Young and Hockey College uh, to complete an agreement to move uh, dispatching to Hockey College. Um, that seems to be an area, a direction that we're wanting to go. I think that there's a definite need for it in the sense that I'm still baffled by the concept of a, a rep. Somebody can call the Nelsonville Police Department number and not get a hold of a, a, an actual person. That to me is very, very problematic. It doesn't allow us to have the customer service to supply the customer service that I feel that we need 
um, until we can take that next level. We can't move to that next level of law enforcement service until we have a fundamental foundation for dispatching. And right now, under the current system, we just don't have that. Uh, a lot of times calls are getting, uh, and, I, and I've monitored this, and so I, I know it to be accurate. Uh, the phone rings off the hook. Um, a lot of times I've been in there, and I, I spend most of my day just answering a phone and then dispatching guys from the office. Uh, the guys are going from call to call, and a lot of times they won't be able to respond to a call for an hour and a half, two hours, and then when you get there, you know, people understand it, and I get it. To them, their call is the most important call in the world. They don't, they're not concerned with what you've been doing. They don't care how busy you are, and I get that to a certain degree. So they're upset when we do arrive. Where in this scenario, it, it will at least enable them to speak with the person, and the person can tell them, the dispatch, that, you know, hey, they're on a call right now, they'll be en route. Um, but once we get these officers trained, we're going to have, you know, more cruises. Right now, we're having a lot of guys doubled up in a car because they're going through the training program. So, again, that's going to help eliminate the issue. But I think being able to talk to somebody, being dispatched directly, also one of the benefits of Hockey College is they're going to complete every call for service that we go to on there's a service, a run sheet that's essentially completed. It's got the basic information down. Hawking College dispatchers will do that for the officers. That can take anywhere from you know 15 to 20 minutes for an officer to do. So if they have you know 10 or 12 reports a day, they easily can spend two hours doing nothing but call sheets. So that's going to free up officers potentially, you know, I'll say an hour a shift from completing their call reports. A lot of times that they don't get them done to the previous day because they got to be reporting paperwork. So that's going to free officers up for hopefully in time. Uh, my, my vision is, you know, additional patrol, uh, additional proactivity type of, uh, you know, arrests, warrants, things of that nature. We're still uh, moving forward on being much more of a proactive approach to things. Uh, we have zero tolerance to drugs. Uh, I'm starting to see some minor benefits of that. Our drug arrests are up. Um, our search warrants are greatly up that we've done in the city of Nelsonville. Um, our general traffic citations are up. They're not where I need them to be. They're not where I expect them to be, but they're certainly a much higher percentage than what they was. Uh, quite frankly, they were you know, somewhat non-existent before. So I'm pleased with the progress. We certainly, I'm certainly not satisfied with it, but I'm, I'm pleased with the direction we're heading. Uh, nobody can argue with the results that we had, comparatively speaking, to just a few months ago. Um, but again, we've been in negotiations with uh, Hockey College with that and uh, kind of going away from the 911 center. Uh, again, it's going to be nice to have somebody to answer the phone, complete those call sheets. They're going to answer the phone. Uh, to Nelsonville Police Department, we're going to have a dedicated line to where it will essentially be completely Nelsonville Police Department. They're talking about putting on additional dispatchers, obviously, to handle the additional workload, uh, the call volume that they, they anticipate. They're going to do that for, I, I know that it hasn't been set yet, but for a price that I feel is very reasonable. I think uh, Scott feels that way as well. We certainly couldn't do our own dispatching for that money. I mean, just in some basic figures, I was thinking it'd be probably around $300,000 annually. And uh, there's been some, some numbers bantered about around 75000 or less. So from from that perspective, it's... Yes, starting in January. And we already pay forty-eight thousand to correct. So it's it's so a it's minor. Yes, yeah, so additional twenty-seven thousand dollars. That's next year. The rest of the year, they're taking care of no charge. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things Doctor Young was uh, was able to you know do with us because they know that we've already paid money. Um, to kind of give it a trial period between you know essentially the last five months of the year, see if it's something that we feel comfortable with at the end of that, and you know which. You know, you don't always often have that opportunity, so I think that's a great opportunity to at least get a chance to see what's going to happen, how it's going to look, tweak the system a little bit, and then make it a more informed decision. Okay, we can bring back to you guys come, you know, the end of this year um, with, you know, recommendations and improvements if need be, and, and we can work out any kinks if there is any. Um, but just so you know, procedurally, we would be treated similar to, like, Athens Police Department. If somebody has a general call for service, they would call the Nelsonville police number and it would ring in their dispatcher. The dispatcher would answer that phone, either Nelsonville Police Department, they would give them their complaint, and they would then dispatch one or two officers, depending on what the call was needed. And that, those officers would respond to that call and handle it just like they would. Um, in an emergency situation, if they dialed 911, it would go to the 911 center. Uh, and if they said that there was you know, a serious call, we'll say like at McDonald's, 
uh, just like it would be in Athens, they would keep that, they would maintain that person on the telephone until they tra explained to them they was transferring the call to um, the dispatch center. Hockey College would then get that call and take that call and dispatch. Um, so it would be, we would essentially be treated just like exactly like what Athens Police Department is now. Um, you know, the only other municipality as far as that goes. So I'm very excited about the potential of having someone, you know, manning the phones 24-7, uh, 365. I think that's long overdue. Um, and again, it will free up officers from not answering telephone calls and uh, completing those call sheets. So I'm excited about that. Also, um, the new cruiser is scheduled to be in this week. Still haven't received an actual date, so I'm anxiously awaiting that. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow or, or Wednesday even. <coughs> so we'll get that. That'll give us a total of four again. That'll really start help limiting the mileage on the cruisers because they're racking up here pretty good when we've got three to, to quit driving right now. Um, I'm currently updating the police department roster through OPATA. There's an enormous amount of paperwork to go through the High Peace Officer Training Academy every time an officer comes to your agency as a new hire or somebody leaves the department. So it was a little behind uh, prior to me uh, being here. So it, I'm doing some catch up work, plus I'm getting the new guys in. Uh, so that's being completed. And then from that, that way we can complete the OH system, which is where we do our complete our reporting system which is offered free, free through the state. Uh, we're still continuing to utilize that. Um, also, in that same, on that same note, uh, one, of the, one of the many things that people, the biggest complaint that I've gotten from people is our dispatching situation, the fact that they can't reach anybody. And I, I completely empathize with them. I know that there's an issue there. Another thing that people are really is telling me, it's conveying to me, and maybe they have to you also, is everyone enjoys the, and likes to know about the daily activity report that they're seeing on Facebook today. So I want I just want the public to know that I'm in full support of that uh, right now due to some of this uh, reporting system that we have right now. I'm unable to collect the data on a daily basis, but that's hopefully going to be rectified in the next week. So you know, they'll start seeing those again. It's something I think the public is entitled to know, and I, I want them to share in that because we're going to be asking the public for continued support in helping us fight crime and to you know provide information. So I want them to know what's going out there, on out there, especially in their neighborhood. So those are coming back. I want to make sure everyone is very clear on that. I think they're a great idea. I think they're something that the public really enjoys. And it keeps everybody informed and on the same page. I want them to know what we're doing. Um, and there's no way we can improve all that if we don't you know, get feedback. So I want the public to understand that that is coming back. Um, again, we, we're increasing traffic enforcement. There's been much more traffic enforcement out there where we're going to ever become a speed trap or anything like that. But cars are now getting or pulled over and the citations are up uh, for traffic violations. Um, I think it's been long overdue. But a lot of times there's people that just somewhat ignoring traffic laws in the city of Nelsonville. So and most people are getting friendly warnings, you know, just told to watch their speed, stop or stop signs, just basic traffic offenses, but the traffic site stops are, are dramatically up. Traffic citations are up, but not nearly as much as traffic stops are. I believe in the pub, positive public interaction with the public, you know, friendly warnings, things of that nature as well. Um, we have to increase patrol in traffic targeted areas that we've gotten complaints on where speeding or stop sign violations is uh, occurring. So we were actually focusing on those areas when we do get a complaint from certain areas. We've uh, increased foot patrol. I think it's a good thing from a, a public relations standpoint. I think people enjoy seeing officers out there on foot. I think it's also good for the officers to get to know people. When you're out there walking, you get to see and walk and talk and get a feel for the community and get a feel for the area. I think that's a positive thing all the way around. I don't see any downside to that at all. So we have increased that. Um, officers also are doing you know, actual business checks. I want them out there, you know, there's nothing wrong with rattling doors on midnights and checking them and making sure that they're, they're secure. Um, I think that's, again, that's that's part of our job. That's what we should be doing out there. I think it's a positive thing. I don't see a downside to any of that. But I think it helps provide a little bit of security from a business owner standpoint that we are out there checking doors. I've never had any complaints from business owners other than maybe if they have to come out and secure a door at 3 in the morning, maybe then. But other than that, you know, I, I want to, I'm getting the guys to go out there and do much more of that. Um, we're working a lot with code enforcement. Um, we're assisting um, Ms. Barber with her code enforcement as much as we can. We're working hand-in-hand -hand together, and uh, we have a lot of the same customers. We're finding out 
I think that that's a benefit to her as well as it is the police department. So uh, one thing I don't know if I should mention, but her and I just had some talks behind the scenes and we've actually mentioned to the, the city manager that we would like to do something maybe in the future once we get everything else straightened up with uh, parking tickets to where she could also potentially write some parking tickets in that area. Because I have to come up with a new system on parking tickets being paid. I found in uh, the chief's office, I'm gonna say hundreds of unpaid parking tickets that was just in a box. Um, so there needs to be a little bit better system. There needs to be a system, let's just put it that way, in uh, the collection of those parking tickets. Uh, so that's something I'm working on as we're going to be working on as well. Um, again, the only thing else I have to say is, you know, I can't, I can't address issues that I'm unaware of, so I welcome all input, positive and negative. I understand we're certainly not, I ask for people's patience, because um, I'm not a very patient person. I want immediate results. And, and I am pleased overall with some of the progress we've made. It's only been four weeks, but we just still have a long way to go. Um, and, you know, I, I have no doubt we'll get there. It's just a matter of, of getting things turned around to where it's acceptable and what I feel is a, is a, is a minimum a certain level of police, you know, service that I feel that right now we're deficient in. So once that continues to improve, I think we'll start getting, you know, more and more positive feedback. I think. I want the public to have a confidence in the Nelsonville Police Department that I, I think maybe hasn't been there for a while. So I want to do everything in my power to get, and the guys are very, very receptive to the changes. I quite honestly was a little surprised. I've been in situations similar to this in the past, and you know, you're met with a little more reluctance than what I'm, uh, than I'm getting. So the guys seem to be on board. I'm really proud of them, what they're doing. Um, I think we're headed definitely in the right direction. But I welcome all input. Like I said, positive and negative. So, okay. Um, I just had a couple questions for the dispatchers. Is that students or who actually is doing that? No, no, these are paid. I mean, they're paid employees. I mean, they're they're just they work as dispatchers. They they advertise for dispatchers. It's not necessary. I'm not saying that some of them may not be a student, but they're hired in as you know full time dispatchers. Okay. So that's I mean that's their job, and you know obviously meet their requirements for the minimum training standards. It's actually out at the college is yeah, where they're located. Correct. Yes. Okay. And I I know being new, maybe Taylor might be the only one that could answer. I'm not sure of it. For at least two and a half years and probably longer, we have been asking for dispatchers only to always be told there's just no money. So I know you've been here since I have. Um, how is that possible now? I mean, it's great. I wanted, I've been begging for a dispatcher for two and a half years to always be told we. For the rest of the month. year, it's free. Well, yeah. So to January. Answer, <laughs> to answer your question, ma'am. So one of the first things that, uh, one of the first um, tasks that I was approached with the previous chief was this dispatching issue. And uh, within the first two weeks, we had a meeting with uh, the county commissioners and the director of the 911 center. And, that, and that's where we learned about, or where I learned rather, that we've been paying an additional $48,000 for years and years and years. And I couldn't figure out what we get for that and why the citizens of Nelsonville have to pay and the citizens of Athens did not. And uh, frankly, it, it came down to where I just asked the question, if we stop paying you, what happens? And the answer is nothing. It, it continues the same. If people call 911, it's going to get dispatched. So by now we have that pot of money and have an option to go out and solicit other folks. So prior to chief getting here, even with the previous chief, we were looking at, uh, there's companies out there that do dispatching for you. So, you know, you could, uh, you could call for service now and it could be transferred to an iceberg in Antarctica and they could uh, do it all for you and come back but that was significantly higher price. So this one being local and especially with her, uh, with, with, it, with Hawking College being willing to work with us just to do a test run, especially at no cost, um, is where we're at with that now. So we haven't committed to anything. In fact, um, you know, we, we've just left it on the table that uh, what we're asking you folks for is permission to get us to the end of the year. And then, uh, you know, we can talk dollars and cents once it gets closer and, and come before, you know, the budget and everything else and, and see what we have to do or don't have to, or, you know, what we can do. But uh, at the end of the day, I, worst case scenario is it goes back to uh, folks leaving messages on the voicemail for PD. 
So if it doesn't work out, it can go back to the way it was and it'll be no harm, no foul. Well, Scott, what, it's important to say in 2004, the dispatching, and this was before our family insurance went to $26,000 a year, dispatching was 250, about a quarter million dollars back in 2004. And we just couldn't afford it. But when we made the agreement in 2004, they were supposed to be doing everything. As a matter of fact, there was a phone in the hallway. So if somebody come to the police station, they picked up the phone and they were talking to the, dis the 911 dispatchers. I think that might be a good idea if we can arrange that with uh, Hawken College dispatchers because we don't have people in the office all the time. So if someone runs in with an emergency and they can pick up the phone and be talking to a dispatcher. But everything that we were supposed to get, every service that Gloucester, that Coolville, that everybody else was getting, and somehow over the years, this went, this disappeared, this disappeared, and then uh, it, it just got to where we were, frankly, if you didn't have an emergency call, you wouldn't get the service. So, uh, by us having our own dispatchers, we go back to the original plan before 2004, and we don't owe the $48,000 because we go back the way we were beforehand. We have dispatchers and the planning that was originally established had Nelson don't have dispatchers. So I don't think we owe the 48,000 if we, if we have that set up. So I just think it's important to say that when it was negotiated, we were supposed to get the service that everybody else got. Somehow or another, we got to be the redhead stepchild in the, in the equation. And I, I, I've never understood that. In addition to the forty-eight thousand, which doesn't sound feasible bringing it to you folks because I, I never I wouldn't even want to ask. And also, residents and property owners are paying the nine one one tax just like everybody else in the county. Correct. Well, Scott, I am glad that you got that answer that nothing would happen because we actually did ask that before, like what would happen if we don't pay. And I don't remember, I, I think Greg was there, so it might have been committee. I don't remember if it was council or committee, but we was I was told that, well, they might not do 911. We just don't want to take the chance. So I'm glad you got the answer to that. That was Chuck that said okay. that. Okay, so I'm glad you got the answer that it was nothing. Excellent work. I was just going to add to his answer for your question that when the city manager would uh, Mr. Hunter, as, as my witness, um, ran the nuts and balls, bolts past me earlier today. My first thought was, and what I said to him was, obviously they've come up with, in my opinion, my opinion doesn't matter on this, but in my opinion, a really great program. So I said to him, okay, now how do we come up with a funding mechanism for it? So the $50,000, say $48,000 savings is part of it. And I think it's now pretty much, it's even, it's really Scott, my, and council's responsibility to how do we fund this if it's a great product from now on and so i think that's what we come up with over the next six months it's kind of what we're, yeah. is the mayor's court uh, fees re, re, rebound this source of good processes yeah all right anything else chief anything else chief if anybody has any questions, I mean, feel free to ask. I mean, that's basically what we've been doing. Um, putting in a lot of long hours trying to get these balls, trying to juggle all these at once. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with the, the progress. I'm impatient because I want it now. But I think we're definitely heading in the right direction. Um, I don't see it. There seems to be a rejuvenation, a different attitude uh, amongst guys. Uh, and I'm happy to see that. I didn't know what I was going to get in, in that area because you never know. And uh, nobody likes a new guy coming in. You know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to up our level of service to where I think we have a, a basic level of service. Then we can start working <coughs> on it and raise it to a higher level. But I have full expectations that we will do that. And there, there should be no reason why we're not. So, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you.
I just want to say real quick, I'm not the only one working over there. Uh, buddy Johnny Flowers has helped me paint and lay flooring. And if anybody wants to volunteer, just contact one of us and come on, show up. Otherwise known as the dream team. <laughs> They are they are They're doing a good job, guys. Good job. I've walked over there and seen it. It looks amazing. Did it pass? It passed. Okay. Yeah. What about you? I did. So, all right. There's an old one where on their first reading of ordinance 55 20. Need someone to introduce it? I do. Ordinance number 55-20, an ordinance amending the appropriations ordinance to appropriate funds to pay the city's FEMA floodplain engineer. Whereas the city engaged it, a FEMA floodplain engineer in 2013 to assist with the challenge of FEMA's new floodplain map. Whereas the case was inactive until 2019 and the city's appropriation of $10,000 has lapsed. Whereas the new case is now active again and the city needs the continued service of the FEMA floodplain engineer who has never been paid. Whereas the appropriations ordinance needs to be amended to appropriate funds to pay the city's FEMA floodplain engineer. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, there is hereby appropriated from the unappropriated balance the following sums. $10,000 from general fund number 100 to line item. It's blank. Well, Taylor's going to give it to you. Yep. Uh, FEMA floodplain engineer. Two, the total appropriations are increased by said amount. Three, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect at the earliest moment permitted by law. Delay enacted by council on first reading under suspension on the 27th day of July, 2020, Nelsonville City Council. Motion to suspend. Second. So how come we didn't pay this back in 2013? Well, it hasn't been incurred all at this point. Uh, uh, Doyle Hartman, uh, if uh, you guys weren't around, but Greg was. Um, I, was so I was here when we did that. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, originally I told you if we had to go to federal court, we could be talking 100000 or something like that. And Doyle agreed to... He would work for 10 and try to keep it in that range. I think his current bill, I think I saw it centered around the council. I thought it's only about, it's less than $2,000 at the moment. Uh, but I, I want to have an executive session after the meeting tonight to bring up to date. But uh, we are at kind of impasse again with FEMA. So I want to appropriate the original 10000 that in case we need it. We may or may not at this point. Okay. Yes. Were you about to say something? Sorry. Um, Ms. Grant? Suspension. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. All right. Ordinance 56 20. I need someone to introduce it. I'll introduce it. Ordinance number 56-20, an ordinance increasing the staff in the fire department to add three part-time firefighters and declaring an emergency. Whereas the fire department needs to increase part-time staffing from 10 to 13 to maintain a healthy roster and the creation of these positions will not create additional shifts. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, the fire department staffing is amended to the following, one chief, three full-time firefighters, 13 part-time firefighters. 
Two, this ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to ORC 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary because the EMS classes start the first week of August and shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Duly enacted by Council on first reading under suspension on the 27th day of July 2020, Nelsonville City Council. Motion to suspend. Second. Uh, you might want Harry to address this. Do you have any questions? Yeah, you can ask, if you have a question, you can you can you can ask it. Harry, you might want to explain the the, the new council members. I'm sure don't understand the, the platoon system that the fire department is currently using. Uh, the way we have the uh, having set up the fire department is uh, we have we work 24 hour shifts. We work part time along with full time on each shift. We have a pool of part time positions that we actually cover open shifts from. So the number that we have on part time on the roster doesn't grow because it's currently a city. The only thing that ever comes into play would be the uniform allowance uh, yearly for the individual. The amount of part time staff that we have does not occur additional shifts or anything of that nature. It just gives us a better pool to be able to cover shifts from. I would rather cover the open shifts with part time versus full time if possible. Okay. Thank you, Chief. And, and just so you're aware, so council is uh, responsible for setting the staffing ordinance, and that's why it's coming before us. So each department, we're in charge of setting the staffing setting goals. staffing ordinances. <laughs> In three years, we have incurred 17 hours of overtime. Awesome. Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> How many um, officers are being trained for EMS? Uh, currently, right now, we thought initially five. We might have seven slots. Um, that'll be. New members coming in as new uh, part time candidates and people that we already have on the roster to get training to the EMT basic level. Mm -hmm. And the cost of this EMA uh, training is, is a COVID 19. Uh, Correct. Uh, this can be CARES Act funding uh, as well. Yes. Nice. Can you want to give a quick update on what your overall plan is for the next service? Since he's 17 hours over. Yeah. Can we second the motion that we put the file on the truck? <laughs> oh, I'm all for it. Let's okay. drop it up. Just asking. He has to match the model. He'd be, be the big red machine. All right. So, uh, as most on the council know, we already performed basic level EMS non transport services in the city, which has actually been a huge change over the years uh, as far as service from the fire department. So, we actually operate on a drug license that's in my name for the city of Nelsonville. This is a county-wide program. We are looking at steps and procedures right now to transition to BLS transport, which will allow Medicaid and private insurance billing as well. So the additional training and the things that we're doing now are all steps to get us further to that to that position. How far away are we from that position? Just so the people know, what's your time frame? I'm not put, I'm not putting you on the spot, but give me a a general estimate of time before we're able to do that. I have one year and five year plans written all over many whiteboards in my office, as a city manager is very aware of. Um, it's close. Probably it's going to take, it's honestly, I think it will take over a year okay. to get us to that point. Um, not only do I have to have the, the level of certification for all of my members to be able to do this. But in all honesty, it will probably entail putting new members on to take care of the EMS side of the department as well. Okay. These will still have to do fire rescue do you think on, with, off top of the EMS. With being able to build, do you think that'll be, you know, will we incur more expenses or will we have a, a gain as that goes? Um, the quick answer is I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, it, it will cost more money to start up. Sure. Um, we have a lot, of, a lot of the equipment that's required, we have now. Um, medical direction, things like that. 
our, our avenues we're looking at right now because we have to make some changes to be able to take that next step. But yes, it will cost us some money to be able to start bringing money in. Overall, we'll, we'll gain and be able to buy more equipment. And more the, the, the point with, like with what I have in the, in the plans and what I have on the wage boards, if we can get all this stuff done in the next three to five years, there's no reason why we can't expand our footprint and grow as a department and bring money in as well. A lot of this equipment may be able to be purchased with COVID-19 money. And the way it's looking, there's going to be a second round. Uh, I, I, I just checked the state last week, and there's only about 232 municipalities have done the resolution to get the uh, COVID. And we're one of them. And uh, there's 981 municipalities in Ohio. So there's a significant number that have not even applied. Um, and there's still 850 million to be appropriated before the end of the year. And I, was, I said on a meeting last week in the governor's office that they're going to try to get that done by the end of August. So there is potentially significant funds that may be turned back in on November. Um, and there's also additional funds that may be available to us. And this is one of those type expenditures that I think we can get approved. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Got a motion. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we already motion to suspend. Uh, Ms. Jones? Yeah. Mr. Smith? Yeah. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Okay. Ordinance uh, 57. Tony, before you do that, I want to make a, I want to make a suggestion on changing the language. Uh, the charter names the city manager as a contracting agent in the city of Nelsonville. And I'd like to, I have no problem with the uh, I have no problem with the um, power and the uh, saying, but I would like to put, insert the city manager instead of city auditor as the person that signs the contract. Our, uh, article, article 4, section 10 of the charter names the city manager as the city's contracting agent. I'd just like to keep with that. And, and have Scott sign the contract. I don't think Scott has any problem signing the contract. Yeah, I'll yeah. with that. I would want Taylor to sign it too, if you're the one that deals with it. I'm fine if Taylor signs it too. I just want to hold to the charter on. So just add to be manager as well as the auditor. So city auditor and city manager. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. Yes. Well, no, because we didn't read it yet. Didn't read it yet. Okay. Uh, amend it before we read it. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, I'll introduce it. All right. It wasn't it read, wasn't read, read yet. yet. It doesn't need to be amended. It hasn't been read. Ordinance number 57-20, an ordinance authorizing... An ordinance authorizing... City the city manager and city auditor to sign an agreement with CareWorks for BWC representation and declaring an emergency. Whereas the city is currently without representation for BWC claims and desires to employ CareWorks as its BWC representative. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, the city auditor is authorized to sign an agreement with CareWorks for group retro and claim flash risk management and representation in accordance with Exhibit A attached here to and incorporated herein by reference. Two, this ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to ORC 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary so that agreement can be signed before July 31 in accordance with BWC guidelines and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Fully enacted by council on first reading under suspension on the 27th day of July 2020, Nelsonville City Council. Yeah, in section one, it should say city manager. Sorry. Do I have to go back and read it? No, you don't need to go back and read it. Okay. Motion to 
questions instead? Second. Do you have any questions? Discussion? We can see discussion. Yeah. Council discussion? Yeah. Um, I just had a couple questions that I'm sure Gary could probably answer them. I don't know if you want me to read them or if it's just that one there and that one there. I don't know if you need to read it for five minutes or anything or just look at it. I just wondered what that meant and then we'll The employer on. may not terminate this agreement or withdraw from the plan once the necessary documents have been submitted and received by the plan administrator and care work. Right. The BWC rules require that the retro uh, designation has to be done by July 31. It has to be for a year. And what that's meaning is you can't withdraw during the year period. And if you want to change at the end of the year, they can change it back. Uh, we, Further, if the employer is to buy participation or renew on the group retro plan for the upcoming mid year, the employer agrees to automatically become a care work state funded client. If you can't be in the retro group and the Meltzville can, as far as I know, then you can't, you know, they have to put you back into a different group, a rating group. It just means you'd be in a different rating group. Um, and, and your rate with BWC may be higher or lower based on that. Yeah, the group. Based on your, your best rate is in the retro group, and there's some guidelines where you can be in that. As far as I know, Meltzville fits this. Thank you. How long have we been without representation? Year. year. So it lapsed last year. And, uh, we were talking about this today. As far as I can tell, we've had multiple hearings without representation because we're not really qualified uh, to work at workers' comp hearings. Um, I would assume it's going to take pretty specialized experience. And typically, workers' comp will just find in favor of whatever the uh, individual is if requesting. If you don't challenge them, you're going to lose. And they're, yeah. they're going to be granted. And I think we've got, would you say, four or five cases right now that are out there? We do. And um, one of which, one of the hearings of which we definitely lost uh, like many weeks of benefits to. So, <laughs> because we had no representation, so they automatically fell against the city. So, so I guess my question is why didn't we have representation? Yeah. That, that's, that, that is absolutely <laughs> mind boggling. So, CareWorks would be our representative. Okay. The, no, I just mean in the past. We were with comp management in the past. Okay. So, we have, and we've been without that since July 31st, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I mean, workers' comp issues typically go through my office because payroll typically has in the past. Um, it just would, I feel it would be irresponsible to send myself or somebody in my office. That's why CareWorks specializes in defending the city. Sure. But to answer your question, Mr. Yeah. Booth, um, the reason why we were without coverage is due to the alleged uh, theft of money uh, that the bills were not paid. Yes. So we were under the impression we had paid. So we thought we had coverage, but yes. Yes. they had the payments hadn't been made. Yes. So the first impression that Mr. Hunter and I, I think, had that we wouldn't take it lapsed, I believe, was late winter, maybe February. We said it the first time. And you can't just join in the middle of the no, year. No, you can't join in the middle. Um, yeah, they won't. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. This, uh, the other thing negligence is, is the short answer. Yeah, it just popped yeah. my mind. Negligence is the short answer. How do we not have coverage? Yeah. We receive the invoices. I have some paid. experience being a union steward, and you cannot send just a regular person. You either have to send a care source or some other company that does a retro plan or the yeah. city attorney. and. I guarantee you that the people that do it is going to be cheaper than sending an attorney to yeah. a hearing. I've done those. I, I don't like doing them. And yeah, I would charge you more than like There's a reason these companies can charge you. They charge you because they're good at what they do. Well, you, yeah, they'll you, get you a rate down. There are rates will go down. Yeah. You can't really practice law without a license. And that's <laughs> 50% premium reduction. Right. And then the cost of the program brought it back up to like it's still it's like 40 percent savings for us this year we spent 60 grand to workers comp uh and that's considered one of our lower years and with the claims we have this year i can guarantee without defense next year will be much higher than 60. Yeah. oh yeah here we're going to bring them to training i believe to help you get the claims down yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. okay we should suspend we'll leave it there. Very good. Yeah. Motion. yeah we're on the boat Okay. Motion to adopt. Mr. Smith? Yeah. Mr. Taylor? Yeah. 
Mr. Shirley? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. So moved. David Second. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Did you answer? No, Greg answered for me. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Grant. Yes. Mr. Booth. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. That's crazy. Okay. Do you want to answer for now? I'm good. Okay. Ordinance 58 20. Ordinance number 58-20, an ordinance declaring police department equipment and vehicles not needed for a public purpose and authorizing the city manager to destroy, sell, or give to other political subdivision said equipment. Whereas the police department has equipment and vehicles not needed for a public purpose, which can be destroyed, sold, and or donated to other political subdivisions. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, the city hereby declares the following equipment and vehicles not needed for a public purpose and authorizing the city manager to destroy, sell, or give to other political subdivisions said equipment. One, 10 ballistic vest body armor expired, destroy. Two, one 308 Remington rifle with scope, sell. Three, one Glock handgun model 18, sell. Four, one Jeep Cherokee, sell. Five, one Chevy Astro minivan, sell or donate to another law enforcement agency. Six, 26 Motorola high band radio batteries, donate to another law enforcement agency or destroy if we cannot find any takers. Seven, four Motorola high band radios, sell or donate to another law enforcement agency. Eight, five, five times 26 tasers, destroy. Nine, eight times 26 tasers, holsters, destroy. 10, 10 times 26 taser batteries, destroy. 11, two Nikon digital cameras, donate to another law enforcement agency or destroy if we cannot find any takers. 12, one Canon digital camera, donate to another law enforcement agency or destroy if we cannot find any takers. Three, should that be 13? <laughs> Think cut off. 13, three Kodak digital cameras, donate to another law enforcement agency or destroy if we cannot find any takers. Two, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect at the earliest moment permitted by law, duly enacted by council on second reading on the 10th day of August 2020, Nelsonville City Council. All right. Ordinance uh, 59-20. Someone there Ordinance 59-20, an ordinance amending the Nelsonville codified ordinances to add vacant property fees. Whereas Nelsonville codified ordinances needs to be amended to add vacant property fees. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, the Nelsonville City Code is amended to add the following, 9-18.01 vacant property fees. The fees described in this section are established in order to defray the cost to the city government and community as a whole related to the health, safety, and economic impacts of structures which remain vacant for long periods of time, including but not limited to administrative costs for registering and processing the vacant pub building, the vacant building owner registration form, and for the cost incurred by the city in monitoring the vacant building site. The fees are also structured in order to provide appropriate incentives for owners of vacant buildings to care for them properly, seek to fill them, and in appropriate cases, demolish them. The annual, annually increased fee amounts 
are intended to absorb the costs incurred by the city for demolition and hazard abatement of or repairs to vacant buildings, as well as the continued normal administrative costs stated above. A, the owner of a vacant building shall pay a fee of $100 for the first year the building remains vacant. For every consecutive year that the building remains vacant, an annual fee will be assessed at double the previous year's fee amount for a maximum annual fee equaling the five-year fee of $1,600 to be used for the fifth and for all consecutive subsequent years of vacancy. B, the first annual fee shall be paid at the time the building is registered. If the owner successively, successfully restores the building to occupancy or demolishes it in accordance with applicable city code during the first year following registration and is renewed in timely fashion and there have been no violations associated with the property, the fee shall be refunded less an administrative charge equal to the cost the city has incurred. B, the fee shall be paid in full prior to the issuance of any zoning or demolition permits unless the property is granted an exemption. C, all delinquent fees shall be paid by the owner prior to any transfer of an ownership interest in a vacant building. A lien may be placed on the property to collect delinquent fees. E, absent a showing of good cause, if a building is not registered within the time frame required in Section B, or the registration is not renewed within 30 days after the expiration of one year from the date of the previous registration, a penalty shall be paid in addition to the annual registration fee. The penalty shall be equal to one half of the current annual fee or $1,000, whichever is less. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect at the earliest date permitted by law, <coughs> duly enacted by council on second reading on the 10th day of August, 2020, Nelsonville City Council. And just uh, to clarify, this is only on commercial property. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any vacant property? Is that vacant, all vacant property? Mm -hmm. I've got another question. Is this then to the planning commission? I don't know. Maybe it's on the assumption. I think she probably has. It really should have been if it happened. Well, we can find out before a second reading. I, I don't know. Becky gave it to me and asked me to put up. It's good. for police and fire. Yeah, I missed that meeting. It changes the zoning code, so it really should go through the planning commission. As I said, I don't know whether it did correct or not. I, I, I before your second reading. Yeah, we'll, we'll research that. I have a question. Um, in A, it says the fee will never be more than $1,600. And then in E, it says the penalty shall be equal to one half of the current annual fee or $1,000, whichever is less. The fee, it would never be more than $800. That right? a, half just a late fee. Late fee for oh, registration. For registration. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't make sense because half of 1600. Right. Yeah, it would still be eight, maximum would be 800. Yeah. yeah. Well, so there's a registration of vacant buildings versus and, and. I mean, somebody come and tell you when they're vacating the building and, and we set it up. I, I, I'm just. No, Becky. I'm always going out checking. Okay, so she, she's she going to check. check. So, okay. <coughs> say uh, they don't pay and we've got that money what do we do where does that go uh we have we're looking for ways to pay for uh, condemnation proceedings i got to try to clean up property so uh, we we money, code money can go that towards that as far as i'm concerned um, otherwise we have to appropriate money we're also working with the land bank i think um, keller blackburn has approached the land bank people about donating fifty thousand. i don't know where that, where yeah. that stands at this point um, they've agreed, and I know that the land bank has agreed to pay for uh, the boarding up the structures and so forth. Uh, the may have been their hands. We're starting to evict uh, people to the, our, the squatters into the property. We have a lot of people that are living so in the property. We're looking at ways to try to clean up some of the property. A lot of so them are money driven. So you see they, they sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Ordinance 60-20, if someone introduce it. <laughs> I'll introduce. Let me 
20 an ordinance amending the Nelsonville codified ordinances to add anti-scavenging. Whereas Nelsonville codified ordinances needs to be amended to add anti-scavenging. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, the city, the Nelsonville City Code is amended to add the following: 9-19-01 scavenging. A, no person other than an employee of the city or waste contractor retained by the city in the performance of their duties shall tamper with or sort through garbage, refuse, or recyclable materials placed out for collection. B, whoever violates this section is guilty of scavenging a minor misdemeanor and upon conviction thereof shall be fined in an amount not exceeding $150 for each violation. Two, this ordinance shall be in full force of effect at earliest date provided by law, duly enacted by council on second reading on the 10th day of August, 2020, Nelsonville City Council. This is another ordinance. Yeah, this is a, such a huge problem we are having right now. Okay, um, ordinance 61-20 uh, that was added to the agenda. Um, someone to introduce it. Ordinance 61-20, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to contract with Hawking College to provide non mm -hmm. Okay, um, this is a Hawking College to provide dispatching service at no cost until December 31, 2020 and declaring an emergency. Whereas the city is currently without Dispatching services and Hawking College has agreed to provide. That would still be non emergency dispatching. You still want it in there? Yeah, okay. Because that's what we're without right now. Whereas the city is currently without non emergency dispatching services and Hawking College has agreed to provide non emergency dispatching no, services. Oh, there you want to say has agreed to provide dispatching <laughs> services. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I'm starting over. Go ahead. Whereas the city is currently without non-emergency dispatching services and Hawking College has agreed to provide dispatching services for Nelsonville at no cost until December 31, 2020. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that one, the city manager is authorized to contract with Hawking College for dispatching, dispatching services at no cost until December 31, 2020. Two, this ordinance is being passed as an emergency measure pursuant to ORC 731.30 because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary so that non-emergency dispatching services. Dispatching services. <laughs> because the immediate passage of the ordinance is necessary so that dispatching services can begin as soon as possible and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. Still be enacted by council on first reading under suspension on the 27th day of July 2020, Nelsonville City Council. Any discussion on this? Because they want my phone service. I get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Motion to suspend. I'll second that. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Dunphy. Yes. Ms. Grant. Yes. Mr. Booth. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Mr. Dunphy. Yes. Ms. Grant. Yes. Mr. Booth. Yes. Ms. Jones. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. Mr. Sherman. Yes. All right. We're moving on to the city manager's report. Scott. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for passing that last ordinance. I'm really excited for PD to have dispatching services now and uh, overall increasing the level of service to our citizens. So the first thing um, I would uh, recommend that uh, Mr. Chris Jones be appointed to, and I think I'm using the incorrect language, so if somebody please help, as a part-time employee to PD. His background check has already come back. And now uh, there's no issues. We would like to start him on Wednesday. Police officer. Police officer. And we have an opening, correct? We do. Okay. And what um, will we'll best leave our staffing at for the police department now with one full time position still available? It'll leave us, including myself, eight full time and two part time is what we have. And 
I believe it's nine and three, if, if I'm not mistaken. So one and one, one part time, full time. Okay. Like to move Chris into full time if things work out. Yes, ultimately, yes. Okay. I think the staffing orders calls for a captain's position. That, are you thinking about changing the staffing order this time? There's two uh, sergeant positions on there. Oh, sergeant. Okay. Yes. And that would be if the time or when and if the time comes, that would be an internal promotion. Okay. The captain's position was an honorary position we did for any terms. Oh, okay. All right. A motion to authorize, hire, authorize the city manager to hire Chris Jones. Yes. Second. Second. <laughs> Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. How soon will a dispatching take place? Do you know? So we're working on some logistical issues between the two of us now. So I talked to Hawking College's uh, um, IT guy today, and I've talked with our IT folks. So it's just a matter of them having a line to drop and then us forwarding over to their line. So a week, maybe? If they if the infrastructure is in place a week, if it's not in place, it could be a couple weeks. Okay. And he wasn't able to get that answer back today, but I, I expect to hear back from him probably tomorrow. All right. So the rest of the city, city is staying very busy as well. Um, at the sewer plant, uh, we're continuing to move down uh, Chestnut Street. Apologize to all the citizens down there. It is a mess. Uh, there's dirt, dust everywhere and uh, the contractor is finally back on track and moving about um, there are some lines down there bypass pumping uh, once we get to the next manhole and get that set up we should start picking up traction and moving a lot faster however we've run into several unforeseen circumstances of backing up and uh, having to bypass pump around um, the construction site so when I say bypass, I don't mean into the storm drain or the river or anything like that. It's all sanitary to sanitary, but it was an unforeseen um, endeavor, which took quite a bit of time. So also talking about the sewer plant, um, we are moving to close on phase two, the documents to get all that squared away to move forward. Uh, we had a critical piece, actually a couple pieces we got to wrap up this week, and then it'll be over to Mr. Hunter to finalize and then we'll be able to move forward on that. Um, you may have seen the folks out patching. They were out patching a little bit last week, and they're out patching this week. They've been doing the ordinance, or they've been complying with the ordinance you passed as far as putting the CDF fill in where the water line repairs have been and uh, uh, going back and covering them. So even the patches they have completed, they have to go back and reseal. So around the edges, so they're not finished yet, but they are moving along with patching operations. The CARES Act, so we set up a CARES committee for what we're going to purchase with the CARES Act money. So, so far, our, we were obligated or we were given $72,000 and we've already, we already have a plan to spend it all. All the final uh, uh, quotes will go to the committee on Monday and that includes new furniture for PD that's COVID compliant for all the officers to have their own station. That's uh, N95 masks that are compatible with existing uh, SCBA mask in the fire department. That is training within the fire department. There is, uh, uh, I don't think I'm missing anything else except for the IT. So it's going to be significant IT for you folks. You'll get your uh, Chromebooks. And then um, also uh, every other say, station it doesn't already have a laptop or has an outdated laptop will be mobile. So if we have to separate for any distance or for any reasons, we can now work uh, offsite or other areas, which fits into the bigger plan, you know, especially with the threat of the river right here. If we ever had to pack up and move, we're far more mobile now. So I've been complaining about for, for, for like two years is the cost of all this paper. Carla Greg likes goes, paper, Greg. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you to it, Greg. Because she really. Hey, I might have a partner. It's hard to take my notes on the screen. It truly is. So 
for the first round of monies, we have a plan to obligate all of that through the uh, through the police department furniture, fire upgrades, and IT upgrades, which wraps up also with the auditor spent on his IT upgrades as well. And eventually, whenever our parts come in for what I hope is a functioning system in here as well. So uh, we are also, we didn't stop there. So the committee's still working on possibilities around two money. So we've had uh, two contractors, three contractors come in that so far to look at our bathrooms. We found out that uh, the touchless bathrooms will likely be covered. So we've had them come in and look at all the bathrooms in City Hall, PD, FD, and then also in uh, utilities. So we're getting quotes together for that so we can move forward. There's also some additional equipment upgrades for PD and I think possibly some more on the FD side. And then we're also looking at what options we can do to the facility in addition to the bathrooms uh, that's consistent with the policy. So as we go through into our committees, we will take all of our uh, uh, quotes and ideas. We pass it up to the state. They evaluate, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, and then we go from there and execute spending. And then also just continue to build the wish list on the backside should we get more funding down the road. The uh, an update on the river water line that we talked about quite a bit. Um, I know we talked in committee the other day, but I just want to give an update to everyone. You know, uh, we, you folks appropriated the roughly $60,000 that I asked for to bore a water line underneath the river. We have since found out that the quotes were drastically off. The quotes didn't include a frack out plan, which is an environmental hazard to the river itself. It also included drilling through dirt and not rock, which there's two significant prices uh, for the difference in the two. So we got additional bids in and that came in at $400,000 on average to bore under in the same place that we got quotes. If I recall correctly, the three quotes, one was 58, one was 70 something, and the other one was right over 100. So all three of those companies went way under quoted all of us. So what we're working and uh, currently we're just building our plan to submit to the Corps of Engineers. We had a permit and we're trying to adjust the permit now and put a line in exactly where the old line is. So instead of boring under the river, this would be remove the line currently in the river or leave it in place and then set a new one beside it or in the exact place it was. So we're working out those details with the Corps of Engineers and that will roughly be $40,000 instead of the 400,000 that we're looking at. So. We're pushing through on that. The permitting process is not fast. Um, last time when my predecessor did it, it took several months. So I look forward to also take several months to get it reapproved. So hopefully by into fall, we're able to move forward with that. The other thing is I just wanted to say thanks to HapCap. Uh, they gave us an employee as part of their summer hire program. And uh, she was an intern here. She answered the phones. Um, Ms. Lexi did a great job for us. She worked in every single department we had from helping the PD, FD, uh, across the street and uh, with the utilities and uh, definitely out with the code officer. And I think she even did some filing for the auditor as well. And uh, we were very happy for her that she uh, got three jobs and left us as part of the program to move on to her three jobs. She lives in town now and is doing really well. And we just want to thank her and HapCap for their support. The other update I have is Polyfield. So Polyfield is, uh, it received the electric poles the other day as part of the neighborhood revitalization grant, uh, which is coming to an end soon. The last thing after the Polyfield poles are finished with the cameras and electric and all that will be uh, a little bit of paving and the remainder of the money, which will be down on Harper and Second Street area. So uh, last pieces down at Poly will be the electric has not been connected yet unless it got connected today. I'll find out when I go home. And then the cameras have not been installed yet, but that's coming soon as well. So everything's coming together nicely and uh, it, it looks really good down there if you guys haven't been down to check it out. Also, the last thing I want to talk about was the water plant and the wells. So uh, we talked about committee meeting. We have three wells down there that supply the city with water. One of the three wells is unoperational. So we have a we have a company coming in that knows how to repair it, has a proven track record, and actually done work for us a long time ago. They are going to pull the motor out and the pump out to camera and give us a, a very a much better or much better quote than what they've given us now. So it's $2,500. They're going to come in. We got that taken care of. We have that in the budget. No need for a program. 
<laughs> but uh, very soon we should have a quote to come. These folks have to get well too fixed. And then in addition to that, the wells, the wells should be serviced uh, no more than every five years. Currently, we don't know when the last time our wells were serviced. So as soon as well two gets done, um, next year for budgeting purpose, I'd like to budget well one and then for the following year, well three, and then get them on a schedule to uh, a maintenance schedule to keep going forward versus uh, just not doing anything with it for quite some time. Well, on the standpipes, we, we did a maintenance contract. Maybe that might be something we can look into. We contracted with uh, with one company, just yearly maintenance, everything. So, this company absolutely offers a uh, preventative maintenance program and I will get that's you a quote. That's what we did with the water time. Absolutely, I'll get you a quote for that, no problem. And that's all I have to report at this time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Scott Frank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Payne, I have a short request. I also request for executive session that I don't usually do a report, but I want to inform council that on uh, July 15th, uh, I became aware that in the Purdue pharmaceutical uh, bankruptcy in New York State, uh, it's a $2 billion bankruptcy, and the bankruptcy judge authorized um, all political subject divisions across the United States to file proofs of claim. Uh, the problem was we had to have ours done by the 17th of July. So I went ahead and looked into that, and the estimated um, damages to the city of Nelson were over $2 million. So I went ahead and filed a uh, proof of claim on July 17th. And I got confirmation back uh, late last week that that had, had been received and was accepted. Don't get too excited because that's $2 billion, but the state of Ohio and every other state can file, and every municipal political subdivision in states can file. So if you go dividing $2 billion, we're entitled to two million. I can imagine you can imagine what Columbus, <laughs> right? <laughs> Some of those places are entitled to, but it should be percentage wise, and uh, it may materialize in significant sums of money. It may not. Uh, well, thank you for there are, going, there are going to be other. We're also participating, as you remember, I had council uh, adopt legislation to um, participate with the state of Ohio, where the attorney general is negotiating a, a settlement in another one of the bankruptcy uh, opioid cases. Uh, uh, for us also. So there's a number of, it, it's could be a sad situation. Most of the major pharmaceutical companies are being thrown into bankruptcy because of the opioid uh, crisis. So maybe if we get money on one side, then we'll be higher in, in uh, pharmaceutical costs in the future, but that's where we are right now. I need an executive session, Mr. President, uh, for uh, pending or threatened litigation. Okay, let's do the good. Can we get a vote of order first? Yeah, one second. So move. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we're doing good as your order. Oh, okay. I didn't. I'm sorry. He's down there in left field. It's okay. okay. Here for the map. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's get off your ears. I'll start with myself to go to the order tonight. Uh, I would just like to really thank uh, Mr. Scott Frank, Taylor Sappington, Scott Fitch. Chief Barber, um, I honestly have a lot of hope for the city, and uh, you guys are leading the charge. So, um, as Joe Dirt always says, keep on keeping on. So, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing, and I believe the citizens do too. So, thank you very much. I think that's the first time I've ever heard Joe Dirt. <laughs> it won't be anyone, that would be Tony. Ms. Grant? I would just say it's nice to see the potholes all getting filled now without us having to come and ask. And um, if it's not too late to fill out your census. Absolutely. Mr. Booth. Oh, thank you very much. I'm just I'm happy that uh, you know I've been appointed to uh, try to help the city out. I'm seeing a lot of good momentum here with uh, Mr. Frank, Mr. Bitch, Mr. Barber. A lot of hardworking people here in town and. Uh, a lot of people are ready for you guys, so keep it up. Ms. Jones. Uh, yeah, I really want to thank um, Scott, Frank, for uh, meeting with me last week and giving me a, a very thorough tour 
of some of the city um, infrastructure projects that are going on. Also, Taylor, um, you know, reviewing some budget things and um, Mr. Fitch with the police department and uh, seeing the operations there. That was, it was a very good introduction to things that are happening here and identifying, um, you know, kind of what we need to be doing. And uh, as Justin said, I'm happy to be here and look forward to making a positive difference in our community. Thank you. We're well, glad to see you get your feet wet. Listen, he took me to the sewer plant. Yes, it was. Um, I said, wear old shoes. We're going to the sewer plant. Oh my God, you did not work. tell me that. Um, right, right. used to be the operator down there and said, hey, time a politician showed up, he stirred it up real good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, welcome on board, and I'm glad to see you. I hope you're here a long time. I've been wanting to retire for a long time. I look forward to seeing younger people jump in and take, a, take an effort and say, welcome on board. So I got them. Yes, welcome aboard. Congratulations. Um, now the work begins. So I'm excited to see the uh, committee list come out. That way we can uh, get to work. And that, that's where majority of the work is actually done in the committee before it comes to full council. So uh, you guys will get your feet wet on that too. And I, I'm, I'm excited for that. So, And I, I agree with uh, Tony's comments. I, I was going to make a similar comment about the city. I'm very proud of where we're at right now. And and uh, the progress we're making, and I'd like to see that continue. So, um, and it, we're getting a lot of public support, and I hope that continues. Um, and uh, either one of you get a painting? I just want to recruit for Dan. Uh, no. no sure. I don't mow grass either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good grass I'm a demo guy. I'm not a painter. Okay. We'll keep that in mind. Thanks. Well, I would also like to welcome the two new members of the board. Congratulations. And I'll mimic uh, Mr. Dunphy and Mr. Taylor's comments about thanking the pets. And I'll add in there thanking Jason Cohen as well oh, yeah. from the utility department. Uh, he's doing a great job over there and with some of his ideas. And if anybody out there in TV land would like to help volunteer to finish painting up the police station, just let me know. That's all I got, boss. All right. I got Lakewood Sanitizer here. I'm good. Nothing can face it. Okay, let's uh, motion for executive session to discuss pending litigation. French? Pending or threatening? Pending or threatening litigation. Inviting in. I'm inviting in the city manager and the city law director. Okay. Come on, second. Second. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. All right, here we go. Motion to come out of executive session. Second. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Booth? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Go ahead, Scott. All right, go ahead, Scott. Yes, I apologize for the late entry. Um, I'd also uh, ask for approval to bring on uh, provisional part-time firefighters, Mr. Neil Summers, Tom Mitchell, and Hayden Dunn. Uh, each candidate is required to uh, complete uh, physical and cognitive testing. So moved. Second. Mr. Booth? Yes. 
Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Oh, I just want to also say that uh, in recognition of all the other officers, I forgot to recognize Becky. She's doing an awesome job as well. Yeah, yeah. same here. She's, she's, we just kind of naturally assume she's going to do her job. So <laughs> uh, it comes with, you know, the, uh, you know, we say if you're not doing your job, you're not getting any complaints. And there's just never any lack of that. So um, also one last thing before we go, ladies and gentlemen, and um, as we well know that we have had several resignations over the last few uh, weeks. Um, we have a position that is open for the vice president's position. Um, it is a position that also requires him, if I was not here to conduct the meeting, also he'd be in charge of mayor's court. So he or she. He or she. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. Um, the unfortunate thing about uh, the mayor's court training is I don't believe there's an, another class offered until January. So um, just take that into consideration. If you want me to do it, I'll gladly resign in January or February when somebody can get trained and somebody else wants it. I don't really want to do it, but I, I'll be free to do it until January or February. Right. Um, Is that something you want to do tonight? Well, I just want you to think about it. Oh, okay. Um, I think we we have two new um, members to council who are really not uh, up to date, and um, I'd like for everyone to. Mayor's court training is a two day training, and it usually takes place the second week of January, and then they'll do it again in February. Or, and the city will pay the fees to go. I can check if they're doing. That. Virtual. virtual they may do may do another one yeah. because if, if we have if we have to go the route if we're doing the route we go no, who has to in case you would get sick and not be able to come to mayor's court you want to make me temporary vice president and tell somebody else well we're just we're talking uh, right now um so the only two people that would be eligible i mean under the training would be dan and greg so I want you to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I want you to consider those options and weigh into it. And I, I, I didn't know Dan still had any certificates. So. All right. All right. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Big? Yes. Yes, Dr. Oh, just what I wanted. More since I have like a tub of paperwork already. <laughs>